Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll talk about sexual reproduction in rhizopus. In rhizopus, sexual reproduction is going to be by conjugation. We have already seen asexual reproduction by spore formation. Now, let us say these are two hyphae of opposite strain. So, if we are showing one with one color, let us use another color for the other hypha. Say one is of positive strain, one is of negative strain. And this basically means positive is equivalent to the male cell or male hypha because here if at this level there is no uh, specialization as such. So one strain is considered as positive equivalent to male and other strain is considered negative equivalent to females. Now when these two hyphae they grow what happens is we are going to continue the stage here but this is happening at the same place. Suppose these two hyphae they continue to grow. We find a lateral bulge in both the hyphae towards each other. So this blue one has shown a bulge, a projection. And same thing is happening in the black one. And these are the nuclei. One nucleus migrates into this bulging part. These bulging parts are known as progametangia. Progametangia. These are the ones which are going to act like the gametes. Now, as I said, it is going to happen at the same place. So, here itself, next step. But we will show the next step in the next slide. So, now what happens is, this was the progametangia. There was a nucleus here. And of this hypha also, this was the progametangia and one nucleus here, other nuclei are as it is. Now there is a septum formation. In case of zygomycetes, the hyphae are aseptic, but there is a septum formation in this region. And after this septum is formed, each segment is going to act as a gametangium. So now we start calling it gametangia. And this is what is called the conjugation process. Up till now, the two nuclei have not fused. Now, next step which is going to happen here is this gametangium of one, this gametangium of the negative strain, and the gametangium of the positive strain. There are septa which are formed. That is gametangium is formed. And now the wall between the two dissolves. That means there is a segment formed where there are two nuclei. One nucleus of positive strain and one of negative strain. Now in the next step, these two segments are going to fuse completely and even their nuclei are, are also going to fuse. So here this is the nucleus of positive strain and this is the nucleus of the negative strain. These two nuclei are now going to fuse and this structure is the zygote with a fused nucleus and now the structure is going to secrete a thick wall around itself. So now this thick structure which is visible to us is known as the zygote. Zygote may remain attached to the parent hypha or may get detached because of its thick wall. So here the hypha is going to grow but that zygote may get separated. So suppose this is the zygote which is probably separated, it will germinate and 
a vertical outgrowth will be seen. And this outgrowth again will have a swollen tip. Vertical structure is known as sporangiophore. But this is a zygote from where the sporangiophore is arising. So we give, we call it zygosporangiophore. And this structure is known as zygosporangium. Here also same thing is going to happen. In the center part there would be vacuoles which would be formed. And in the peripheral part there would be spores. And these spores would be released when the sporangium ruptures. So now when the sporangium ruptures... The spores are released and these spores, they are almost 50% of these spores are positive strain and 50% of these spores are negative strain. So when this spore germinates, it will give rise to a positive strain hypha and when this spore germinates, it will give rise to a negative spore hypha. And these hyphae will form the vegetative part. That means this would be the stoloniferous hyphae. It will give rise to rhizoidal hyphae. And on that vegetative, again, there could be sexual or asexual reproduction. So in case of rhizopus, both sexual and asexual reproductions are seen. It is known as isogamous type. The reason it is called isogamous because these two structures which are acting as gametes, they are exactly identical morphologically, physiologically. So it is known as isogamous. There is one more example of zygomycetes and that is mucor. There are few differences between rhizopus and mucor. Most of the things are same. Now let us take the differences. We will write mucor here and rhizopus here. In mucor, these sporangiophores which are found, they are single. So, sporangiophores are single. Whereas, in this, the sporangiophores are in clusters. What does this mean? Suppose, if we draw a mucor. So how would it look? This is the stoloniferous hypha or this is the hypha and here is a sporangiophore and a sporangia. Whereas in case of rhizopus, we would find one sporangiophore and its sporangium, sporangiophore and its sporangium. So it is going to appear in cluster where it is going to be always single. Second difference is in case of mucor, there is no differentiation of hyphae. That means we would not find stoloniferous, rhizoidal, etc. Whereas here, there is differentiation of hyphae. Another important thing, mucor grows on dung. It grows on animal waste and that is why it is known as coprophilus. Copro word is used for fecal matter and phyllus is attracting or loving. Whereas rhizopus grows on bread and so it is known as bread mold. So structurally there are few differences like in case of mucor we, we may not find stoloniferous and rhizoidal hyphae. The sporangiophores would always grow in single uh, numbers from every place. Whereas in case of rhizopus, there is a clear demarcation of stoloniferous hyphae, rhizoidal hyphae and the sporangiophores are always in cluster. They would be found growing on bread or bread-like substances. Whereas mucor could always be found growing on animal dung. And that is why mucor is known as coprophilus fungus. So this is the group zygomycetes. The reason why we called it zygomycetes because here is zygote form. And the reason why we call it conjugation fungus is 
because these two cells are or these two hyphae are actually uh, joining or conjugating and there is a mixing of or recombination of genetic material so it is a sexual reproduction which is seen in case of zygomycetes these are all aseptate hyphae except for the gametangia where septum formation is seen and in all these stages which we have seen there was no flagellate or motile member so these are the characteristic features of zygomycetes and this is the most important example now in the next part we'll take another group